Hi everybody, I have been mushroom hunting. It is mushroom season. And in our little temperate rainforest, in the front of my yard, I found this beautiful specimen. Now, I do not believe it's an animated. It has pink gills, and I'm not sure that you can see that there. Uh, I think it's an agaricus. So we'll see if we can get a, an identity on this. We can, of course, be doing spore prints. I'm not sure if you can see that beautiful pink color and that detaching vulva. Not vulva. This is the vulva. The detaching gill thing here. <laughs> It's so cool. I thought I had an animated phylloides in my front yard, and I've been smashing these mushrooms because they scare me. It could possibly be a poisonous mushroom. In fact, every mushroom that you find, if you don't know exactly what it is, consider it poisonous. Every mushroom, of course, is edible once, at least. But let's not test that out if you want to try your... Uh, um, amateur mycology um, excursions. Now, if you live in an area like mine, you're going to come across mushrooms all the time. And if, like me, you find them fascinating, I'm going to show you some of my favorites that are popping up this time of year. This is a parasol variety. All again, another toadstool type. Here's the stem. This one is particularly nice. It, it has white spore print and white uh, underneath it's the pattern on the top that helps me identify it and the spore print so that tells me and I know I've eaten these a lot <laughs> the reason I really like this one is because when it's dried it just breaks off and it's nice and and flaky and incorporates into like chicken salad really easy which is really nice this type of mushroom if you're not drying it in a high heat oven uh, really should be cooked any uh, mushrooms should be cooked but just know that there are certain mushrooms that even if you cook them doesn't mean it will uh, uh, get rid of the toxins the toxins will dissolve your inside so please 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 do not eat white mushrooms especially if you find them and you don't know exactly what it is but this one was really I'm going to try to get this in the light so you can see the pinkness of it but I'm going to show you in the next little bit how we work on figuring out what type of mushroom it is, especially if it's something that shows up every year, like this one seems to do in my front yard. So we're in the rainy season, and the rainy season is within days you can have new mushrooms pop up, and it's absolutely fabulous and super, super fun, especially if you like mushrooms. And I actually didn't like mushrooms until I started getting chanterelles, pines and these more exotic flavorful mushrooms than what you'll find in the store. The porcinis are great but they just don't have my favorite mushroom of all time right now is the ugliest mushroom I think out there is the pig ear mushroom and it's a black chanterelle or well those are nice too the trumpet uh, trumpet trumpet mushrooms are really really good too but this is a the pig ear is a purple uh, and it gets huge, like like lobster mushrooms, huge. Uh, also another really fun mushroom. If I find one of those this year, I will show you the lobster mushroom. Very, very cool, beautiful color. You can actually use it to dye things, which is great. I wonder if we could use it in color cosmetics. Probably not. Um, we will be doing some color cosmetic um, dyes, some acid dyes when we go to Morocco. So if you want to see that, please come with me to Morocco. There's lots of information here on the website about when it is and how much it costs and, and what we're going to be doing. I have a whole team of people over in Morocco right now doing everything and setting things up. We have our own personal driver, private tours. It's going to be epic. And we're going south and we're going to relax for about 10 days in the Square Oasis and about 50 kilometers from all these wonderful things we'll be able to do. Camel. Uh, we'll be able to ride camels. We'll be able to do some hiking. We're going to have the locals are going to teach us how to cook. We're going to go into villages. Uh, we're going to do some foraging. So I, I know that mushrooms aren't generally found in the desert, but you're going to find some really amazing other things, things like prickly pear cactus and associated, we'll just say, things with the prickly pear cactus that I would like to really show you and show you how to um, 
incorporate those in beauty products. Uh, Morocco for years and years and years and years and years before the synthetic dyes uh, hit the market were one of the major uh, importers of exporters of uh, natural red dye. So we're going to uh, go into natural red dyes and the cochineal. If you don't know what that is, it's a bug. I always thought it was some kind of crustacean. <laughs> it's not. I've known this for a while, but when I was little, a cochineal, that sounds like something, you know, like a, like a, um, you know, something from the ocean, but no, it's, it's a little red bug, bug dye. And depending on how we regulate the pH, and we're going to talk a lot about pH when you're in my classes, that's something that's very important. It's important for your preservative. It's important for your active. It's just important for everything, even your rheology modifiers, the things that make it thick, the things that suspend. pH is really, really important. So we're going to be doing a lot of things with pH um, sensitive ingredients, some with not so sensitive because you're beginners, which is fine. And I prefer not to have to think so hard all the time too. Uh, but you need to um, understand that pH is very important if you're ever going to even do DIY. So you need to check your pH. If you're going to be doing it a lot, invest in a proper digital pH meter. The strips aren't that accurate. And we don't want to be uh, creating contamination, which is what will happen if you don't get your pH right. One of the things, because it'll inactivate your preservative. And so <laughs> if you are a professional formulator, you do need to send your things in for preservative efficacy testing. It's expensive, probably around $1,000. But you'll know that the amount and the ball and then the and the type is not going to grow anything dangerous. So it's very very important that you do that. Um, there's some other tests that I'll show you this next year. Um, I have all of my equipment now to uh, to uh, to test for contamination of my workspace of my materials. Um, so that'll be really fun to show you uh, the incubator. I was so excited when the incubator came. I may have to name him too. <laughs> Lots of new equipment. So what we're talking about right now though are mushrooms. And as you, most of you know, mushrooms are very important in a lot of the new up and coming um, beauty products. And the beauty products I'm talking about are the mushrooms I'm talking about that are used in beauty products, things like shiitakes, uh, rishi, uh, the snow mushroom, one of my favorites, the Chinese snow fungus. It is absolutely the funnest to formulate with and to create serums with. It's, it's super, super fun. We've made some extracts here on the Gen Spice channel, so if you haven't seen those, do a search for snow mushroom extract and how to make it. This is an, uh, an alcohol extract. You can do it with glycerin if you don't want to use alcohol. You can do it. There are different ways to make extracts. You can dry it, and there are Believe me, there are lots of different ways you can do it. And you can also buy special extracts from uh, professional suppliers who have done all of the making it available, the bioavailability of the uh, ingredients within the mushroom. If you're getting serious about anti-aging and um, beautifying products. <laughs> Very, very fun. Anyway, so if you enjoyed this, we're going to now you know, do some, some dissection and see if we can figure out what this beautiful mushroom is. All right, so hang on if you want to see some more.